Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I'm recreating some of those antique primitive door wall boxes. They are pretty pricey to buy. Here are some examples of those that sold. I have a pattern here that I created just for myself, but if you'd like a copy, I will leave a link in the description box below. My plan is to stain all of the pieces in my dark walnut tint. And once that dries, I'm going to dry brush the smaller box with the Waverly Celery Chalk Paint. I think that's a pretty primitive color. And then for the taller box, I'm going to dry brush that with what's called Nantucket Blue, and that's a folk art home decor chalk paint. I think these are two very pretty primitive colors. And then on top of that, I will use some of the antiquing wax by Waverly. I won't show me cutting out all of the pieces, but I do have this cheat sheet here. And like I said, if you'd like to download it, I'll leave a link in the description box below. The top pieces I drew out because I'm not very good with that. And then I simply used my jigsaw to cut those pieces out. So you'll just cut the back piece and then you'll lay the templates on each one and just cut and trace it out and then cut with a jigsaw. Of course, you could use your own design as well. I even left a place for the hole and you can see the hole here. And then the bottom looks like this and I'm not even worried that the pieces are not fitting perfectly because they're primitive pieces. We don't want them perfect, right? But I think these will be so pretty even for the holidays. But then you can keep them up year round because you can put greenery in them. This is one of those useful primitive decor pieces. I cut out all of my wood pieces on my miter saw. But you could easily use a miter box as well. And for wood, I used pickets. I would use my own scrap wood, however it is winter in Wisconsin and the snowblower blocks the table saw outside. So these pickets are really cheap. You can um, get a 6 by one at Menards for around $2.74 right now. And I only used one picket for this whole project. So it's even a very cheap project. I will get these sanded and stained. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper here and I'm making sure to round off those edges. I even sanded around those holes and now I'm just coming in with my nails and kind of roughing up the boards to make them look a little more aged and you can use the back of your hammer as well. And then I'll just stain everything with my walnut wood tint. And then you'll just continue staining until you get all of your pieces done. All of my pieces have been stained and they have dried. And now I'm simply taking a piece of sandpaper, it's 220 grit, and going along all of the edges to age the piece as it would have normally had wear and tear and I'll even do that to the holes as well. The next step is to do a dry fit which simply means I'm going to put everything together with clamps and then I'll make some markings where I need to pre-drill holes for the screws. I'll just use my sharpie to make 
the dots for where I need to pre-drill. And the marks that I made, that will be the back. So that will also help me in assembling these. And here I've got everything dry fitted and I have pre-drilled my holes and I can just put my screws in. I just want to show you what happens when you get a little heavy handed with the drill. I split the wood here and instead of redoing everything, recutting a piece, restaining, I just use some stainable wood filler. And when that dries, I'll just sand it off and paint over that. And it will really look primitive, right? If there are any woodworkers in my audience, could you let me know what the best screws are to use for pickets? I know I could have used my brad nailer, but I really wanted to do some screws. So if you know of any good ones and the size, let me know. Thank you. You guessed it. I split another one, but it's okay. I had the wood filler handy. I'm sharing with you when I make mistakes so that you know it's okay to do that and everything is fixable, right? So don't be afraid to get in the wood shop, experiment because that's how we'll learn. The larger box is all assembled and I think it looks great. And the next step, of course, will be to dry brush on the chalk paint and there's the screws and I'll just paint those screws. And I see I missed a couple screws, but I'll go back in and add those. And here's the small box. It looks pretty rough, doesn't it? But it's, I promise, it's okay. This box has survived the splitting, and I'll just go over that with, this, with some sandpaper. And there you have it. It looks even more primitive, right? Not bad at all, it's fine. It's ready for some paint. And I think it looks really primitive with the crack. What do you think? And it's really sturdy. I think that's a win. The small box, we said we were going to paint celery, so I'm just painting those nails before I do the dry brushing. And I'll do that for all of the nails. I meant to say screws. And here I am just doing a little dab on the back. Now we're ready to do some dry brushing. I'm just using a chalk paintbrush. And then what I'll do is I'll just put some of the paint down on my work surface. Dab the brush into the paint and then brush it off in another area because we don't want the paintbrush saturated. It's just a dry brush. And I know you can't see it here, but I'm just going to the side and getting that paint off of the brush and it's just gonna be about that much, not much at all. And here we go. I really like that color. I think that'll be perfect. And I'm not giving it full coverage because I want a distressed look like the paint had fallen off over the years. And you can't even tell where the flaws were where I split the wood. How amazing is that? I love it. And you'll just keep painting until you're satisfied with the look. You can go as thick as you want or as light as you want. I tend to go lighter because you know I like everything dark and I do do the inside, the back, and the bottom. I 
I think this one turned out so pretty. And you really wouldn't need to put antiquing wax on it, but I do want to put a sealer on it. And it makes you forget that you even had flaws, right? And now we're ready to dry brush the larger one. And remember, we were going to use the Nantucket Blue chalk paint. I really love this one as well. Now this is an older paint. It didn't really adhere after I put the antiquing wax on and you'll see that. And now it's time for the antiquing wax. And an alternative would be to add just some clear polycrylic if you really wanted to uh, keep the paint color. Because I think they're pretty just like that. And now I'll just be applying the antiquing wax. And I'll just take my brush and dab it in and brush it off and just lightly put on a coat and then I'll wipe it back with a rag and it's that easy and you can put on as much or as little as you want and here is what it looks like up close isn't that pretty And you'll just continue this process until you get the look that you want. So pretty. I really like the look of it. I love the imperfections. And then here's this one. And see how the antiquing wax faded out the Nantucket blue chalk paint. And I think because it's an older paint. So I may go back over it with the Nantucket blue and another coat of antiquing wax. And here's how I staged them on some barn wood. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in the workshop. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until the next video, God bless. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you're returning, thank you so much. And if you have found value in this video, please like and comment.